All right, welcome to another episode of the award-winning Sales Game Changers podcast. My name is Fred Diamond. Of course, I'm the co-founder of the Institute for Excellence in Sales and the host and the producer of the Sales Game Changers podcast for well over 600 episodes. And I'm very, very excited today because this is one of the first three panel shows that we've done in a while. We're going to be talking today about sales transformation. So we transcribe every Sales Game Changers podcast we've ever done. You can read every transcription of the over 650 shows. Go to salesgamechangerspodcast.com, salesgamechangerspodcast.com slash sales transformation. So uh, I'm very excited because uh, we're talking today with Dr. Phil Squire. He's the CEO of Consalia. And uh, his vision for the sales profession is to help make sales the world's most sought after profession. And uh, actually the mission of the Institute for Excellence in Sales, which I run is to help employers attract, retain, motivate, and elevate top tier talent. And we are in sync because we truly believe that uh, sales is a profession. And we're going to be talking today with uh, Phil and a couple of other guests about, um, about that transformation and the profession. He, of course, is the author of Selling Transformed, Develop the Sales Values, which deliver competitive advantage. We're also very honored today. We have Dr. Grant Von Albrecht from Royal Caribbean. I know I'm going to hopefully say that right. That's uh, right. <laughs> and we also have Alex um, Furrow Royal from SAP. And uh, he also wrote the foreword to the book Selling Transformed. And um, uh, this is one of the first shows we've interviewed sales leaders around the globe. This is one of our truly uh, global shows. Uh, Dr. Grant Albrecht is in London and Axel is in France. Uh, Dr. Squire, introduce yourself and, and just to tell, tell us where you are. I presume you're in uh, the UK somewhere. I am in the UK. Yeah, <laughs> south of London. Uh, so um, yeah, not too far from London at all. Um, so tell us a little bit about the book. Tell us why you wrote the book and then we'll get deep into what sales transformation is and, and how, uh, how Grant and, and Axel have been able to apply it at their companies. Uh, the, well, the book was written on the back of the doctorate that I uh, completed in 2009. And uh, people have been asking me to try and produce it in a way that people can more easily read than a rather dry sort of doctoral thesis. Um, so yeah, it took some time coming since uh, I finished the doctorate and since it was published, but um, that was predominantly the reason why I wrote the book. So tell us what transformation means. Tell us about sales transformation. Why did you devote your, you know, a big chunk of your career to this particular topic? I think you can approach that that uh, that question at a, a number of different levels. I think if you look at the world in which we we live, I think most people would say that we live in a very transformative environment with you know, the amount of change going on at so many you know, different levels, whether it's uh, economic or whether it's social, um, whether it's sort of walls flaring up here and there, we're having to deal with an unprecedented uh, amount of change. Um, so, so you've got the context of the environment in which you work, and then you've got the context uh, also of the organizations that need to respond to those changes, and then the transformation that's required of individuals to try and affect new work pra uh, practices in, in, in that changing landscape. Um, so I think it's very interesting when you talk about the difference between change and transformation. The analogy that we tend to use is, you know, are you trying to create a faster caterpillar or are you trying to create a butterfly? And uh, for most organizations, um, they need to transform into being a butterfly. Uh, but what they tend to address is becoming a more effective caterpillar. Yeah, that's actually a really interesting point. You know, I think it's Gardner who says that 87% of sales reps forget what they are taught through sales training methods within a month. Uh, we do a lot of events. Well, prior to the pandemic, we were doing close to 50 events per year at the sales, at the Institute for Excellence in Sales. And I would always say at the very end of all of our sessions, you know, write down three things that you're going to implement today, because the moment you leave, you're going to forget 50% of what we just talked about. And the moment you get on the beltway around Washington, DC, you're going to forget the other 45%. Uh, we have two other guests I'm excited to have on. We have Axel Ferrer Royals from SAP, and I know I just botched your last name. And we have Dr. Grant Van Albrecht from Royal Caribbean. Axel, introduce yourself. You wrote the forward 
to the book, Selling Transformed. Uh, give us your insights into what Dr. Phil just said. I know I said I was going to call you Phil. Now I am calling you Dr. <laughs> Phil. <That's laughs> Grant, I'm going to have to call you Dr. Grant as well. But, but Axel, uh, I'm, I'm, the only not, I'm the only one not being a doctor. So <laughs> let me give you my perspective here. And I'm very happy to be with all of you. Um, I'm passionate about sales. I'm passionate about transformation. I actually move on the other side of the house, meaning that I'm now training and enabling sales leaders. And the way I went through transformation is when 10 years ago, I have been given the challenge to transform the frontline sales managers in EMEA in Europe, Middle East and Africa at SAP. And I couldn't find the right way to do that because those people are extremely busy and it's very tough to get them into a transformative journey. And that's the point when I talked to Consalia and to Phil, Dr. Squire, and we started investigating the best way to do so. And we realized that the best way to do that is to create a master program, a two year long journey for the managers to be able to transform at a very deep level. And the way I look at it is that if you want to transform, you need to modify your belief system. It's not only a question of competencies. Most of the organization I'm hearing at the moment are talking, talking about competence, competence and competence. And of course it's important, but transformation goes deeper than that. And I approach Consalia and Phil asking him, how can we do it? How can we create that space, this transformative landscape where managers can really transform their belief system and the way they operate, they lead, they manage and they coach. And that's what we have done since 10 years in a row now. And we have transformed more than 150 sales managers, frontline sales managers, and therefore uh, impacted thousands of sales executives and quota carriers across SAP. Very good. We'll be talking more about what's been going on at SAP. And, and I appreciate it. Just one quick question. Is uh, everything that you do base from corporate headquarters around to the rest of the world? Or do the various um, geographies have their own way about going this? Or is everything kind of centralized and then pushed out? Oh, we, we have global programs and leadership programs, but then each region have their own local flavors, of course. Very good. We also have Dr. Grant Van Albrecht with Royal Caribbean. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you do and, and how you came to be here. Uh, I'm similar to Axel. Uh, I, I focus more on the educational aspect and the support side for the sales teams globally. Um, uh, but my journey started in 2018, and I came from America. Obviously, you can hear the accent. Uh, from our headquarters in Miami over here to look at how could we improve the sales efficiency of our teams throughout Europe, Middle East, and Africa. And when we looked at it, the company is, you know, at the time when we started this journey was 50 years strong, but there was no sales manual in the company at all. There were, you know, every other facet and entity within the business had clear instructions or a university a pathway. Uh, degree platforms and, and programs to teach them how to do their jobs in accounting, IT, uh, different types of principles throughout, but sales had nothing. So uh, I was then introduced to Dr. Philip Squire at the Consolidated Sales Business School, and he said, you should go into a master's program. And I thought, oh my gosh, I'm in my 40s. Do I do that? Well, um, I bonded with Dr. Phil very quickly, and uh, not only did I pass his master's program, but I went straight into the doctorate program, and since I've passed that as well, too. So um, we, we focus heavily now and we pride ourselves on being the first in the cruise industry to champion sales science and sales psychology and really going deep into, just like Axel, how do you sell? What is the process of sales and how do you match that to the way your customers want to be sold to? Um, with a primary tool set that comes from Consalia and Dr. Phil's work based on the foundation of the sales mindsets, how do you bring in the customer's voice to everything you do? So before I talk to Dr. Phil about the mindset aspect and mindset survey and things that he's included in the book, quick question for you, um, for Grant, is to most of the people who listen to the Sales Game Changers podcast, we've done over 650 episodes, typically it's B2B sales or uh, either technology or media. We've had hospitality. We've had some sales leaders from Hilton, for example, on the show. Who do you sell to? Who do your is it, um, you know, you do, are there salespeople at your Royal Caribbean and your, and your brands who sell to individuals or do you sell to travel agents or associations? Give us a little insight into who you sell to and then we'll get to Dr. Phil. Absolutely. Yeah, people, uh, cruise is, is real mystery. They look to see, you know, what is this, you know, $5 trillion business and how does it work uh, around the world? And we have the same global sales structures as most entities. We have territory management sales, retail uh, sales agents, boots on the ground, so to speak. We have the key account management programs. We have business development 
Uh, we have our call center management throughout the world, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of agents across the world that represent that. Um, we have charter sales, so we have event sales. So it's all across the spectrum of sales. We sell to travel agents, we sell to corporations, uh, business and entities, and we sell directly to the customer. So whether it be through our uh, websites uh, where we're doing to sales support there, or it's through the call centers or through any of the, the areas that I've just described, we're selling to at all points, the cruise voyage and the cruise vacation. All right, very good. Dr. Phil, and here I am calling you Dr. Phil. I'm going to keep calling you Dr. Phil. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't really bother me. And, and Grant, I'll call you Dr. Grant as well. Uh, you know, a big part of, of what you teach and, and in the book, of course, is, is mindset. And Axel and Grant just referred to that as well about how critical that was to the transformation at both of their companies. Um, you know, you talk about the, the four key values and mindsets that customers want to see from salespeople, authenticity, mm -hmm client centricity, proactive creativity, and tactful audacity. Talk about that a little bit. What is this? And I also heard about your mindset survey. Uh, just give us some insights into that. And, you know, everyone's listening to the Sales Game Changers podcast or the reading the transcript to get better at sales. So give us some insights into how that works. I think, I think the essence of, of, of how we got to the mi mindsets um, came from, as was mentioned earlier, sort of interviewing many uh, hundreds of customers around the world about how they want to be sold to. And I realized after a couple of years of looking at the data that um, where I had this sort of competence mindset when I was looking at the data, which Axel's referred to, it, uh, actually customers weren't so much interested in competence and skills and sales methodology and process, but they were really interested in the core values that salespeople demonstrated. And I found with my research, there's very little done actually around values for selling. Uh, and I borrowed out of uh, Howard Gardner's book, Five Minds for the Future, uh, the concept of mindsets and values being interchangeable. And so we, when we looked at all the data and we, we, we codified it into four, these four areas that you talked about. So uh, authenticity and client centric being the base values for building trust, but the where the magic happens is in the proactive creativity and tactful audacity. And I worked for a couple of years with uh, Hewlett Packard Enterprises um, with a control group working with very large deals, looking at every single facet of how they sold from the beginning to negotiation and applying these mindsets. And we've been able to demonstrate um, really conclusive, you know, powerfully that by applying these mindsets, you can really, really shift performance at a level that was unprecedented, uh, at least in their organization. And, and that's been carried on now with many companies around the world. So mindsets go deep. They go to your core values and belief systems. It's not about methodology or, you know, tricks of trying to get people to sell, but it's actually, it's, it's the way you think that matters and how you think is connected to the core values and belief systems that you have. I agree with you a thousand percent. As a matter of fact, we, when the pandemic kicked in, in, in March of 2020, we were doing a, a daily webinar and every Thursday it was called the optimal sales mindset. And we got deep into mindset. This is why it's so critical. And actually, uh, when I ask sales leaders, what's the number one thing? Mindset comes up time and time again. I want to ask uh, Grant and Axel to give some insights into some of the lessons from mm -hmm. Dr. Phil and how they've made a difference specifically at both of your companies. Grant, let's start with you. So yes. uh, how has the lessons, things that you've learned from what uh, Dr. Phil has been working on and what he teaches, how has that made a significant impact at Royal Caribbean? Well, I do have to say, just a, a preface, there are many, many different tools that uh, Dr. Phil and Consali have put together that we've learned throughout the Sales Masters program, uh, the, but the mindsets are the foundation, and so that's where you start. Um, and one of the, 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 the biggest learning factors for us was, I almost challenged it. So we took what Dr. Phil taught us and we thought, that can't be at Royal Caribbean, you know, um, in his research, that comes down to less than 10% of salespeople are effective at their jobs. Mm. And I just that just hit us. And I just thought that can't be true. Maybe that was 10 years ago when he did his global research to earn his doctorate of which he did. And so we hired an external entity to go out and interview 160 of Europe, Middle East and Africa travel agents, our B2B customers. 
and we were shocked to find out that less than 10% of salespeople are effective at their jobs. Exactly what he taught us in the master's program. So then we, that helped us to reorchestrate the framework. How would we build our digital sales academy? And everything that we did has to be tied to the positive mindsets so that we're not promoting people to behave in the negative frameworks that people don't want to be sold to. It was really, truly eye-opening. So everything that we built in our sales academy matches to that. And again, that's just one facet of the many tools he taught us. Very good. So Axel, you know, SAP, you're in a, have historically been in a very competitive space. You know, uh, one of my, uh, I know somebody who's a VP of sales for public sector, and he's in the space where you are, and he calls it the uh, the NFL of sales. You know, uh, the solutions that you're in, the uh, what he's been known as the ERP world, et cetera. It's, you know, big choices, risky solutions for customers to make the decisions. So, you know, there's so much complexity in your particular marketplace, complex software. Talk a little bit about the transformation and how you've been able to enact that based on some of the lessons that you've learned. I fully agree with the analogy of sport in that case. I guess we are high performing sales teams here. It's a very high velocity type environment. We need to work on a very complex type of solutions that we are selling. Um, the issue we have, or we had, and we still have with salespeople, is that especially sales managers were the best salespeople. So when they need to adapt or to a new environment, they will rely on their experience. But as Phil said at the beginning of the call, the environment is changing so fast that your experience doesn't actually remain the best basis for the future. Especially at SAP, moving from on-premise sales to the cloud has been a massive shift. And to get our sales manager to embrace cloud was a very big transformation, right? It requires much more than skills. You need to rethink the way you engage. And what we see back to the values, if you don't follow the four mindset, you are starting losing trust. What's funny is that in the cloud market, trust is key. Trust and loyalty are the two things you're looking for. So when you try to establish trust, you cannot fake, you need to be authentic, right? You need to be really customer centric, otherwise it will be felt as being not authentic. And that is more beyond the technique of sales that Phil was referring to. So what we see is that I could work and collaborate with Consalia and with Phil and getting those four mindset to start it shifting the behaviors and the mindset of the sales managers in order to embrace the values of the new cloud engagement. And this is key to us because unless we bring this trust to the sales cycle, the loyalty and the adoption of our solutions will not be successful. But the second point, which for me is absolutely key is innovation. I don't believe any company today can survive without innovation. Innovation is not a technical stuff, it's a mindset thing. Right? So there is a point where you need to go back to your mindset, understand how you can become innovative, and that's where tactful audacity and proactive creativity comes in. So on the one hand, you have trust, on the other one, you have innovation, and that's what the four mindsets are bringing to the table. So that's what we brought to the sales managers. You know, this show is a, it's a 30 minute show. We could probably have done a three hour show. So I definitely want to have some follow-up opportunities, but Phil, I have a question for you. You know, we talked before about change, ver change versus transformation. I hate the question I'm going to ask you because I hate when people ask me this question. Uh, people always ask me, are salespeople born or are they made, if you will? Can, we talked before about 10% of salespeople are successful. Uh, does everybody have the possibility of transformation or what percentage of people do you think just aren't able to do it? And then a follow-up question for the sales leaders who are able, who do have the innate skills or whatever to transform, uh, you know, how can they truly achieve true transformation at their practice? Two, two part question there. Well, I mean, there, there are quite a few questions in there. <laughs> I'm not sure I can answer them. Right, the first one is, can everybody transform? Can, I, I think it is possible, but it comes back to Carol Dweck's work and, you know, you, it helps to have a growth mindset. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and quite often people who come onto the master's program are there because they want to learn and they come reasonably open minded. So you're dealing with a, a fertile environment in which to get them to really kind of reflect and change. And, and for that community, I think, you know, absolutely, you know, a, a lot of these people are highly skilled individuals, highly competent at what they do. Um, but actually, they're, they're, they're sort of given a framework, we call it reflective practice, a way of actually problem solving, analyze situations, and some simple frameworks and tools that can help 
elevate what they do onto a completely new level. Um, and that's really where the innovation come. You know, occasionally you get people coming who are skeptical, who have a closed mindset. And uh, we've had a number of people come on. I remember the first one at SAP that we did, Axel, do you remember? We had someone came from South Africa. He thought he was on a three-day course, yeah. not a two-year <laughs> master's program. Um, uh, and he sort of wondered what the hell he was doing. But actually, it's, it, it, it is incredible how much people can change if you allow them the space to do it. You won't win over everyone. So to answer your question, I do believe that people can be transformed in much the same way that someone can get a, an epiphany and suddenly become a, you know, sort of a, a um, you know, sort of very religious, let's say. Something can happen that, that's a switch that somehow turned. And if you can find out what that switch is, you can do amazing things. And that's what we try and enable people to do, you know, to transform. But we don't win them all, but we win a, a 97 percent probably yeah i'm kind of reminded of what you just said of the expression that people overestimate what they can do in a year but underestimate what they can do in 10 years yeah. now obviously as sales leaders we're not going to give our people 10 years you know to transform yeah. sales is the most from our perspective which is why we do the sales game changers podcast why we created the institute for excellence in sales yeah. we believe that sales is the most important role in the company and uh yeah. we talk about that all the time oh god we got time for two more questions and we're definitely going to have all you back because there's so many things that are arising from this conversation. Yeah. <laughs> but but, but I, I want to ask, um, you know, we're doing today's interview in March of 2023, although people are listening well into the future. You know, we're coming out of the pandemic, whatever that meant. And, and obviously cruises were significantly impacted. Uh, I want this question both for Grant and for, for Axel. Uh, what are the two biggest sales challenges that you face? What are the biggest sales or sales challenge that you face as we're emerging from the pandemic? You know, every industry was hit by the last three years. Cruises were obviously hit, you know, for many, many reasons. And it's interesting, you know, we could probably talk to you about that on a, on a follow-up show, but what is the biggest challenge? How are you solving them? And then Phil, I'd like your insights after we get both answers. Uh, Grant, why don't you go first? Sure. Uh, our biggest challenge is, is resetting. Uh, coming out of the pandemic. So, you know, uh, for us over a $10 billion industry to zero, not one penny in revenue for two years uh, is, is pretty shocking. So what we have done is try to be the, the biggest support for travel agents who are primary B2B and build them back up, um, whether it be with funding support, whether it be with education support. So everything that we have learned from the consulting sales business school and the program, we have been able to put that right directly back into our travel agents. So not only are we building our sales teams, but now we're actually building our customer, our, you know, and actually investing in them so that they can in turn invest into uh, our mutual customer who will come on board our ships. So it's been a complete reset. If you think of uh, the travel agents around the world, many of them were um, mid to senior level and they just weren't able to come through it. So. They chose different careers, et cetera. So now we have a whole new generation of travel agents around the world. I'm just kind of curious, what is your vision for the next two years? Uh, things are going to come, I mean, it looks like I'm seeing all these advertisements on social media for cruises in my feeds, the various video feeds, there's what I ate on my cruise ship today type of a thing. So are we, are we, is it rushing back? Is it, uh, going to be, what do you think? Just give us your the insight. The gates are open. <laughs> the old statement, if you build it, they will come. And that's what we're continuing to do. Uh, our new ships are already uh, in full swing. Uh, so yeah, our, our, our order books for our new ships are, are full down the uh, road for the next 10 years. So we are, we're having record breaking years at uh, filling our ships. So it's, it's just full steam ahead. One last question before we focus on Axel, what is the hardest thing you know, now that we're out of the, we're, we're obviously coming out, we're not totally out. Um, we're transforming. 2023 is a big transformation year for the world, of course. Um, what is the biggest challenge in selling? Forget about the pandemic. What is the biggest challenge in selling what you do? For us, it's continuing uh, what we learned with Dr. Phil um, and the Consalia program. It is putting his winning value proposition tool and framework into our account management program, which is the biggest channel for sales for us globally. And it's putting those tools into play. Um, every single time we introduce this element from our master's program to a, a new sales member, whether they've been doing account management for 20 years, 30 years, they always say the same thing. We never knew that much about account management. 
Um, and that's because, again, Dr. Phil is being a pioneer leader in, in you know, formalizing education for sales. So that is our biggest opportunity, is continuing to apply that and embed that in our account management sales process globally. Very good. Axel with you, SAP. So what are the what is the biggest challenge coming out of the pandemic? And yeah, we're doing today's show in March of 2023. You know, there's a lot of layoffs in the technology industry, uh, even from the largest companies all the way on down. Uh, give us your insights into the biggest challenge right now coming out of the pandemic and how are you solving that? It. From a controversial perspective, I would say the pandemic helped us in the sense that each organization had to invest in technology and each company has become IT companies. So for us in the IT sector, that's not a bad thing. We were already ready to sell remote. We just had to expedite that and make it more effective and invest more into that digital way of selling. From a pure sales perspective, the very interesting thing with the cloud as the cloud becomes the de facto standard is the shift to a certain extent as a center of gravity from sales to post sales. And the transformation you see around at the moment at SAP is how do we balance that new paradigm, right? We know how to sell, the salesperson cannot shoot and forget as it was before and then give that to consulting or partners. Now we need to make sure that we have a continuum of value till the value realization for the customer. So customer centricity becomes really a key motto and a key behavior because there is no way out. So we are really focusing on our customer value development and digital transformation. And of course, it asks us to rethink the way we engage and sales to expand their understanding and scope beyond the, the primary engagement and the signature of the contract. And the migration from sales to post sales is big in terms of collaboration, in terms of innovation, in terms of um, engagement in a simplified way with customers. That's a big thing. So that's what we are focusing on at the moment. Very good. Dr. Phil, what is your, your thoughts on what, uh, what Grant and Axel just shared? Well, I think there are two things that are really important. Um, one is the ability to deal with ambiguity. And I think in, you know, both the cruise industry and I know in, in Axel's company, um, you know, there's been so much change. You don't quite know what's around the next corner. So the ability, if you're looking at what is your source of competitive advantage, I would say your ability to be comfortable in making important decisions in an ambiguous world is important. The other one is agility and the ability to be able to think really quickly on your feet. I think the challenge with larger companies is the ability to change in a short space of time. Um, so those those two factors at a leadership level, I think, are rather critical you know, to, to maintain competitive advantage. All right. So before we wrap up here, I just want to acknowledge again the book, Selling Transformed, Develop the Sales Values, which deliver competitive advantage. You can read the complete transcription today, salesgamechangerspodcast.com slash sales transformation. Gentlemen, I'm going to ask you all for your final action step. People should be dealing right now after they listen to the podcast or read the transcription. But I just want to acknowledge you offer some great insights. Like I said, this should have been a three-hour show. I don't know if anybody would have sat with us. So we're definitely going to have some follow-up opportunities. Um, Dr. Phil, I just want to acknowledge you for all the work that you're doing, which was just obviously complimented from, from Grant and Axel for so many companies uh, over your career who helped them transform. Transformation is something that we're very committed to at the Institute for Excellence in Sales. We have a very robust women in sales program. We're the center of excellence for corporate women in sales best practices. And through our women in sales leadership forum, hundreds of women have thanked us for helping us transform their personal lives, which has helped them transform their sales career. So what you're doing is, is amazing work. I'm glad uh, that we had you on today. We're definitely going to do a follow-up because there's so much more I could be talking about here. Uh, give us your final action steps. Let's go Axel first. Just something nice and pithy that the people listening to today's show or reading the transcript should do right now to take their sales career to the next level. Oh, the only thing I would say really is get your own uh, master program for leading sales transformation into your organization. Create that space for transformation and take the time. It's worth it. Very good. Grant, how about you? I'd say almost the same. Uh, but if anything you want to do to move forward, let go of the 1980s consultative sales tips and tricks and the everything else to manipulate the sale. We don't live there anymore. And if you want to learn how to advance, go to consalia.com and learn about the Sales Masters in Science program. There are different master's programs there. 
it will change your life. Um, I've been in sales my whole life, and now I am a doctor of sales transformation. Go figure that. <laughs> so, there you go. Very good. Well, I, I agree with you a thousand percent. I mean, the '80s are gone, the '90s are gone. Yeah. You know, uh, customers are in charge for you know for. Exactly. And it's been that way for a number of years. Um, someone made an interesting point yesterday. A lot of people say that the customer is in charge, and you know, you've, we all heard the stat that the sales process is. 57 to 60 percent done before you even talk to the customer you know a lot of people are now saying that yeah but customers don't know everything they need to know so mm -hmm. a sales professional that's going to help them achieve what they need to achieve is truly a valuable commodity dr phil i want to thank you i'm going to ask you to kind of bring us home here give us your final action step for people listening to today's podcast do you know i i think axel and and grant have, have said it all <laughs> you know they, they, you know, it's best to listen to to the, to those two rather than you know hear from me what the key action is. Listen to the customers, and they're, you know, they're our customers. Yeah. I'll hear from you in the master's program, and that's a joy. <laughs> All right. Once again, I want to thank uh, Axel Grant and and Dr. Phil, uh, Dr. Grant, for being on today's Sales Game Changers podcast. My name is Fred Diamond. <laughs>